So one of the most exciting things about learning more about raw food has been for me to discover how to use a knife properly. And uh, really in the kitchen I've found that you only need probably one or even two knives. And today I've got a, a chef knife here and I've also got a small knife which is a paring knife and we find that if we have those two knives that we really don't need a great deal more. You can have a serrated blade with your paring knife and you can also have a, a, a clear knife, a clear blade. And with our chef knife you'll notice there's some little indentations along here and they are really helpful because they slide through the food really, it helps the knife slide through the food really well. And there are a few safety aspects to having knives in the kitchen and one of them is that if you have a nice sharp knife that you're less likely to cut yourself which seems perhaps unusual but uh, with a, a blunt knife you're pushing harder down on the food and if it happens to slip you're going to cut yourself quite badly. Now if you have a, a, a sheath to keep your knife in that's quite important because then you're not blunting your knife when it's in a, in a, uh, a kitchen drawer or it's lying around on the kitchen top. So it's um, quite nice to have a sheath which you can just keep it in and it stops the, uh, the blade from getting blunt at, uh, while we're um, storing it. Now when you are uh, cutting with a knife you tend to use the rocking motion. So you hold your knife like this and you rock with your wrist and you find that that will be a great way to cut through your food really carefully and um, precisely. Uh, when you're washing it, always carry your knife so that you, it's down by your side and the blade is facing backwards so that if there was an accident you're not going to cut anybody else or um, by carrying it across when it's the blade is open. And the same when you're washing it in the sink, it's a good idea to just rinse it off, dry it and bring it back and put it in its sheath rather than have it lying around in the kitchen sink. These are just really basic safety things with knives but something to consider because they're um, a really treasured part of the kitchen utensil that we use and if we look after our knife we've got it for a lifetime so it's really worthwhile doing that. Now I was just going to show you a couple of little uh, ways of cutting things and, uh, and holding things. So when we are going to cut food I'm just going to take the end off first of the carrot and we'll just do, we'll just, we're going to use a carrot as an example and when you're holding it the idea is to have a claw-like hand because these knuckles then become the way that we guide the knife and you find if you've got your, your hand like that that you're never going to cut yourself. Uh, maybe if your emotions are out of line and you're feeling angry or, or cross or there's something that's popped up during the conversation while you're cutting uh, and you're not uh, feeling that emotion, well you're probably likely to cut yourself as well. So if you can hang on to your food with that and then you've got your knuckle like that and then you're just going to glide through it like that. So first of all we're going to do a, a stabilizing cut with our carrot which is just like that and that gives us a nice flat surface for us to, um, to sit it on and we'll do another stabilizing cut on this side and again on this side and again on this side. And you'll notice now that we've got a nice plank a plank shape with our carrot and this way we can now do some nice little um, slices. So if you notice how I'm holding it and we're just getting the same thickness as much as possible and then these are like little planks and we can just li line them up on top of each other like this and we can now do some juliennes. Now juliennes are really just lovely little thin pieces of carrot and the secret with all of our raw food is that we try and use different textures and we get these textures through cutting our food in a different way. So you can see how beautiful these are. I didn't think I'd ever get so excited about carrots but when I see these beautiful little juliennes I just think how gorgeous they are and, and they are lovely in your um, in your food so they might be in a salad or they might be in a vegetable dish that you're making and then we can use those same juliennes uh, if we're wanting to um, make some very fine dicing and this gives us another texture so all we do is line them up like that 
and then we just cut through like this. And we have these beautiful little um, diced pieces of carrot, which adds another texture and crunch to our recipe. And so we've got some lovely little, little squares like that, and you might want to block it a bit more, so you could actually have bigger squares. So we, could, we might do another one here. And if you're wanting it to be chunky, um, we just cut through there and then you bring it around like this and you've got this, the same but you've just got bigger pieces. So here we have a simple carrot and we've got so many different ways that we can cut a carrot and it's really very beautiful because uh, you'll notice when you have uh, your food that if you've got a variety of textures and sizes and all of these things not only do they make the food look beautiful, but there's a certain amount of love that's gone into it because you've gone to the trouble of cutting it and making it look beautiful and it, your heart is involved in this. So it's, it's really an appreciation and a value for the wonderful food that we have available to us here in Australia and uh, we are very blessed. And of course, the, the value of the food is also interconnected with uh, the quality of the soil that it's grown in and um, and it goes all the way right through so if the person who's growing the food has a great deal of love then the food the, the vegetable is going to have an extra quality to it that normally it wouldn't have and then of course those who pick it and bring it to the bring it into the kitchen and those who prepare it and of course then those who eat it so if there's a deep appreciation for mother nature and on all of the gorgeous uh, vegetables that we have available to us, I think that the end result can't help but be absolutely delicious and wonderful and totally scrumptious. Now the other thing I was just going to show you quickly was how much fun we can have with a knife and this paring knife and you'll notice here that I've, I've made a little rose and I've made a little mushroom and these are just really simple techniques that we learnt when, when I was um, doing some, some cooking and all it is is a paring knife and you just peel your tomato very thinly around and around like you would perhaps an orange even. And this is just so simple and yet you end up with a beautiful red rose. And some of these things become quite special when you are preparing a dish because you can uh, really make something look very pretty and very beautiful and we do eat with our eyes to some degree so the love that goes into it and the way it is presented I feel is quite important so we can do this so just to show you very quickly how to do this you've just peeled a little bit of your tomato and then all you simply do is just roll it up and you couldn't believe that it could be so simple to make a beautiful rose so the secret is when we start off that we have a piece in the middle that is going to, to make the center of your rose. And we just roll it, roll it, and the tighter we roll it, the, the more beautiful it'll be. So we just roll it up like this. And we might just cut that little curly piece off. And there we have the most gorgeous little red rose. And you can see here I've made one, I made one a little earlier. And then it's the same with our, um, I, I love to make a mushroom um, pate and I always think it's kind of fun to put a couple of little mushrooms on the top just as a decoration and we can make our plate look really beautiful with a little, um, with a little mushroom on the top and this has just been made with a radish. And it's so simple once again, it's, it's a very, very simple way of doing it. But all you do is you just go around your, cap, your, um, your radish like this. And you're just going to cut some little, some little um, legs for it, as it were. And, you, and so you're just going to go through like this. Take a couple of little pieces out so it'll sit up. a little bit a little bit hard to do it holding it up off the, off the table but um, it has the same effect so you can see the final product over there that I've made when I had a little more um, having it on the table but with our paring knife we can do all sorts of things 
and to make food just look attractive on a plate and um, and of course the taste is still there but it just adds a little um, a little bit of um, style to our our beautiful little and if we just take a few little pieces off out of the top we end up with like a little mushroom with our little bits and pieces and these look really pretty on a tray with some some um, mushroom pate or um, you can use them in any capacity you like but they're just little fun things to do and we um, find that there are lots of things you can make with vegetables and, and uh, if you just wanting to pretty up your plate so there you have a gorgeous little mushroom just the same as we had like that okay <laughs>